Electric cars often look to the future and this new Audi e-tron is no exception. It has no side mirrors, instead it has these cameras which replace them. How does that work? Well the image is shown in the car on two screens on the inside of the doors. What's this technology like to live with? What's it like to park with? Well we're going to find that out today. Our Audi e-tron 55 Quattro Sportback 1st Edition starts from $169,350. With metallic paint, as tested, that price rose to $171,650. Our car comes standard with these virtual mirrors, however if you want them on your regular e-tron model, expect to pay $3,500 for the privilege. In some of the footage, you'll notice that the vision has a pink hue to it. That's just our camera playing tricks, it is not like that in real life. The name of the game here is Aerodynamic Efficiency. They also look quite expensive too, and thankfully, like old school mirrors, they fold both ways as to protect themselves from damage. Let's jump inside now and see where the big changes are. Inside, there are two screens which give you live vision as you're driving. The image itself is clear, the resolution is great, and they are excellent at night time too. The image presented itself is quite flat. It doesn't have the same convex or fishbowl look that you get from a set of traditional mirrors. You can adjust them while you're driving, but that is a little bit fiddly, and I'll show you that now. To adjust the mirrors, you simply tap on the screen, and you're given with a few options. You can adjust the driver's side or the passenger side mirror, or move the image around to suit where you're currently sitting. This reset function leads me to believe that Audi expects you to adjust these mirrors quite frequently. The first thing you notice behind the wheel is the positioning of the screens. They're actually mounted quite low down in the doors, which means you have to take your vision off the road in order to see what's going on. It would have been better of Audi to place them up on a dash where the speakers are, as that's more in line of sight with forward vision. Image clarity in resolution is great too. You can go as far as seeing number plates on people's faces as you drive past them if that's any indication on the quality of the image. Image brightness, or contrast, is spot on too. Audi's engineers have calibrated an image that's quite representative to what your eyes see out of a regular window. The big test, however, is what they like to park with. Well, we're going to find out right now. I'm just conducting a reverse park. This is my third attempt now, and instantly I've noticed that the cars still feel a bit close to the mirrors when they're actually not. You do rely on the 360 camera to pull off the manoeuvre, but as you can see, I'm still half a metre away on this side from the car next to me. A little bit tricky, but I'm sure over time, you'll get used to it. Another common manoeuvre is the parallel park. So we'll engage reverse. We'll dip the mirror on the offside as low as it will go. First thing you notice is that the mirror actually doesn't dip far enough to show you its position relative to the kerb. So it's a bit of a guessing game there. Slotting in now, slotting in. Overall, Parallel parking is definitely easier than reverse parking, but you still can't see that wheel when you're going up against the kerb. So what do we think of this technology? Well, it'll impress your friends, and it's a great party trick, but in all honesty, it lacks a little bit of convenience compared to a regular set of mirrors. Head to cardvice.com to catch the full review on this Audi e-tron. And as usual, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the Cardvice channel.